A shunt exists which connects the umbilical vein as it travels through the liver to the inferior vena cava just as it enters the right atrium of the heart. This shunt is known as the ductus venosus in the fetus, which becomes the ligamentum venosum in adults. This shunt is trumpet-shaped, having a very narrow isthmus where it meets the umbilical vein. This isthmus is only about a half a millimeter in width in mid-gestation and perhaps two millimeters later in gestation. This narrowness increases the speed of blood traveling through the duct reaching the heart. And so the speed of blood flow can more than quadruple as blood goes from the umbilical vein through the ductus venosus. The amount of blood passing through the ductus venosus varies from perhaps 30% of the blood in the umbilical vein midway through gestation to perhaps 20% later, although there are variations here. It is possible for a fetus to survive development without a ductus venosus. This sometimes occurs, although the absence of a ductus venosus can also then be a cause of fetal death. The ductus venosus, carrying oxygenated blood from the umbilical vein, and the left hepatic vein, which is largely oxygenated, fuse with the inferior vena cava very close to where it joins the right atrium. The atrial septum does not completely divide the right and left atria during development, and instead an opening known as the foramen ovale allows blood to pass into either of the two atria from the inferior vena cava. The angle at which the superior and inferior vena cava enter into the right atrium ensures that the majority of their blood, which is largely deoxygenated, will be shunted towards the right atrium and right ventricle. However, the angle at which the ductus venosus empties into uh, the inferior vena cava as it empties into the heart and the increased velocity of this blood. This ensures that the majority of its largely oxygenated blood will enter the left atrium as opposed to the right atrium. And so thus the two separate streams of blood head in largely opposite directions, although there is some mixing. And thus the aorta possesses blood which is far more oxygenated than the blood which passes through the pulmonary trunk.